Hi everyone, my name is Gabriel and this is the Hour of the Raven, your channel for everything Ravenloft, RPG, Dungeons and Dragons and Horror. Today we are going to explore the dark secrets of Sidicus, a domain where your own shadows might be corrupted by evil. Before we proceed, however, a warning. In the present video we will explore several secrets of the campaign setting, and if you intend to play in Sidicus, this video may contain spoilers of adventures, novels and supplements of the setting. Are you ready? Then let us drink from the black waters of the Lake of Sounds, in the depths of the Vedrawa salt mines, and listen to what is whispered by the shadows of Sidicus. Power of the Raven Sidicus, the land of spectres, has its own essence, intrinsically linked to its dark lords. In the not too distant past, these lands were ruled by Lord Soth, the Knight of the Black Rose. The mighty Death Knight was plagued by his sins and mistakes, and the lands of Sidicus presented themselves as a distorted reflection of his homeland in Kryn. As if to torment Lord Soth, his fortress, Nedagard Keep, seemed to be constantly changing, and it often seemed to alter its passages, corridors, arches and battlements, as if it were a feeble memory of the past, or a dream whose detail we cannot recall. The same effect could also be seen in the natural landscapes of Sidicus. During the era of Lord Soft's government, it was not uncommon for the landscape to play tricks even on experienced explorers, creating a constant sense of insecurity and strangeness. Now, after the disappearance of the Black Knight, a new evil has taken on the dark mantle of Lord of these lands, and now Sidicus is a reflection of Inza Kuchavik dark soul. The land of spectres now seem to be afflicted with deep and moving shadows and travelers reveal that the landscape seemed to create a disturbing familiarity, which can be just as deceptive and dangerous. The truth is that those who enter Sidicus, after a few hours, begin to feel a restlessness and unease of unknown origin. Sad and bitter memories, full of regret and guilt, seem to invade the thoughts of those who wander these lands. Sidicus guilt as this strange phenomenon became known, has afflicted both natives and foreigners since Lord Soth disappeared from his throne, and only truly innocent people seem to be immune to such condition. The source of these painful feelings and memories is the dark lady of this domain, the evil shadow that once was called by the name of Inza Kuchavik. Through the feelings of pain and guilt of those who walk in her domain, she corrupts their souls and manipulates everyone from the shadows to achieve her sinister goals. Another evil force to be feared in Sidicus, much more evident in his draft, is its tyrannical ruler, King Azrael Dak. Formerly Lord of Seneschal, the dwarf already acted as a despot even while Lord Sof was still on his throne, and in the absence of his overlord, he proclaimed himself the king of Sidicus. Azrael came from the dwarf city of Brigalur, on some unknown world of the material plane. His incompetence led him to cause serious accidents in his parents' workshop. Considered lazy and incompetent by his community, Azrael was viewed with disdain. One day, while being scolded and reprimanded by his fathers, he lost control of his temper and in fury launched himself at his parents, committing a brutal murder. Pursued by guards, he fled to the caves in the underground. Wounded and frightened, he heard a voice from the darkness, which offered him power in exchange for the destruction of the city of Briganum. Azrael accepted the dark proposal, 
and felt his body undergo a horrendous transformation, while he became a lycanthrope, a hybrid beast between a dwarf and a badger. With his new gifts and powers, he murdered his persecutors and became a scourge for his hometown, living in its surroundings and attacking and killing with sickly sadness for more than 50 years. One day, while hunting for a victim, he was engulfed by mists and was swallowed into the demi-plane of dread. He emerged in the wastelands of Forlorn and traveled through the lands of Gundarak and Barovia until the fateful day when he met Lord Soth. Lord Soth saw Azrael escape from a group of Barovians who intended to exterminate him, but he was not impressed by the dwarf. Azrael, however, perceived Lord Soth as a figure of great power and proceeded to follow him. When he was discovered by the Dark Knight, he offered his services to Lord Soth and became his servant. Together, they confronted Duke Gundar and his son and later charged the Ravenloft castle. When Lord Soth entered the mists, and Sidicus was unveiled, he made Azrael the seneschal of his castle, Nedagard Keep. Azrael served for thirty years as Lord Soth's emissary, and his tyranny and cruelty earned him the nicknames of the Sorrow of Sidicus. After the events of the Grand Conjunction, Azrael discovered, hidden in the deeps of the salt mines of Eidrava, the Black Chapel and the Lake of Sounds. Once again, he began to hear the voice of darkness, which revealed the secrets of Sidicus to him and whispered promises of power and glory. As Lord Soth sank into his own memories in Nedagar Keep, Azrael's admiration for his overlord turned to contempt, and contaminated by the dark whispers, he began to conspire against his master. Azrael forged secret alliance with Malokyo Adere and Inza Kuchavik while planning an unholy ritual on the Lake of Sounds to take control of the shadows of Sitikus and to become the new Dark Lord of the Domain. His plans failed, however, when Ganelon, once a human miner and resident of Vaidrava, poisoned Azrael and prevented the ritual from being completed in the event known as the Hour of Screaming Shadows. After the ritual failed, a new dark power commanded Sitikus and Azrael found himself threatened. The shadows that once promised him power and glory now mocked the dwarf. He emerged from the Vedrava salt mines with a paranoid and maddened look. He soon declared himself king of Sitikus, and now he increases the violence and tyranny of his actions to assert his rule and control over the domain. Under his command are several soldiers and mercenaries, and he also commands the Politskarai, a secret police, who pass on secrets to him and spread intrigue among his enemies. Recently, Azrael has begun traveling through Sitikus in his chariot decorated with the bones of his enemies, fighting various sources of insurgency. Although he has not established a capital, he spends most of his time in a military camp in the south of the domain, known as the Sorrow. Those who happen to be taken to his camp either become soldiers in the service of Azrael or know the horrors of being a prisoner of the despot. Nearby, in the depths of the Vedrava salt mines, is the Black Chapel, an ancient construction with an unknown purpose, with statues, altars and benches made of salt stones, the Black Chapel lies in the depth of the salt mines and reveals strange tunnels excavated by the claws of some gigantic creature. Those who dare to venture down these corridors arrive at the Lake of Sounds, 
an underground lake filled with dark waters, black as shadows. A purple light seemed to shine on the rocks of these caves, and constant whispers seemed to echo on their stone walls. Those who, like us, dared to drink from these dark and poisonous waters, began to understand the constant whispers that echo in these caves, and start listening to everything that is said in Sitikus, as if the people's shadows themselves were telling the secrets of their owners. The underground darkness of the mines is home to the dangerous salt shadows, creatures that emanate from the very suffering and evil that seems to cluster in the depths of the salt mines. These fluid-shaped entities look like liquid shadows and are capable of momentarily taking the form of vague humanoid figures. The touch of these creatures causes burns and can drain the strength of their victims. People who have all their strength drained by these shadows will also become salt shadows. These monsters are also capable of possessing the bodies of their victims. People possessed by salt shadows emanate a slight salty smell, and when they commit evil acts, their eye orbs become dark, revealing the presence of the salt shadows that control them. These creatures hate life, and delight in manic acts of corruption and hatred. Their greatest weakness is light, and they can be immediately destroyed if they come in contact with sunlight. Heading north, beyond the city of Hartland, before entering the Fumwood, we find an abandoned clearing known as the last stand of the Vistani. The unmarked clearing can be identified only by the remains of Vardos rotting with abandon and humidity. In the past, this place was the last stand of the Wanderer's caravan, where they were slaughtered by Malokyo Adair's troops. The clearing is reputed to be haunted, and is marked by a great silence and disturbing aura. Only other Vistanis usually come to this place to pay homage to the deceased caravan. In the Fumwood forest, we found the hidden ruins of Kendralind, a village of Kendras dragged from Kryn by the mists. During the Sitikan Civil War, Lord Soth decided to create a race of undead creatures to serve him. When the village of the joyful Kendras of Kendralin was swallowed into the land of the mists, Lord Soth hunted, tortured and slowly killed all the Kendras, hoping to unlock the secrets to turn this small humanoid race into undead. Unraveling macabre secrets during his tortures, he used dark rituals to corrupt their souls and bodies, to create a vampire strain of loyal servants. The candid strain of vampires are scrawling figures with skin stretched over their bones, that speak through sighs as if the act of speech is suffered and painful. Their bodies are slow and rigid, but endowed with great strength. Their claws in addition to causing damage, affect the spirit of their enemies and drain the intelligence and wisdom of their victims. Once per hour, these creatures can give an horrendous laugh, which causes insanity in those who hear it. These vampires can be turned away by the shimmering weed, a plant native of green that also grows in a few places in Sidicus. They are unable to cross the borders of the domain of Sirikus due to their connection to lots of unholy magic, and if forced to cross the border, they will be immediately destroyed. Kender's vampires can assume the spiritual form, becoming a poltergeist, invisible and immaterial. These vampires will be immediately destroyed if impaled by their own hoopax, weapons typical of the Kender culture a mixture of a stick and a sling, which are always carried by these little humanoids. 
on the road that connects NVIDIA to Heartland is the Iron Warden, a tavern of dubious reputation. In the past, this place was known for sponsoring games of chance, where players from various parts of the world gathered to participate. Some nights, however, Lord Soft himself and his Seneschal attended to these games, and those presents were obliged to participate in a dispute where the winner would earn the dubious honor of acting as commander of a military expedition to the Iron Hills to face the Wild Elves in battle. The Iron Hills are the home base of the Wild Elves, the main group that opposes the tyrannical government of Azrael. In the years leading up to Lord Soft's disappearance, the Wild Elves were led by the mysterious White Rose, a commander of unknown identity. The identity of this enemy became an obsession to Lord Sof, who believed that she was Kitiara, a great warrior of Green, whom he planned to transform into an undead creature to be his immortal companion and lover. The White Rose's true identity was a manifestation of the spirit of Isolde, Lord Soth's elvish wife, who had cursed him in the distant past when he failed to avoid the cataclysm in Green and refused to save the life of his son Peradur. Despite the disappearance of Lord Soth, rumor says that even today the spirit of the White Rose still lingers around Sirikus, appearing to assist those in need. Other ancient hounds linked to the infamous Lord Sof are still present in the nightmares of the people of Sirikus. Those who break their word and promises in Sirikus must be careful not to attract the attention of the Whispering Beast. Tall Tin, which furs over his body, Usually covered in mud and dirt, the Whispering Beast is a macabre monstrosity. The features of his face resemble that of a noble-born elf, but his presence exudes an aura of fear and a putrid smell. Anyone who breaks a promise and are publicly denounced can attract the beast's attention. The Oathbreaker began to hear whispers in his ears, listening to his sins, lies and crime, until his sanity is broken by the constant litany of his false promises. When the victim has finally lost his sanity, the Whispering Beast will be able to summon the Tormentor to his presence, and many are the madmen who wander into the unknown to be destroyed by the beasts or to serve the monstrosity. The creature has a necklace of thirteen severed ears, through which it can whisper and his words will be heard by his victims. Its lair is hidden in the Iron Hills, in a cave that can be identified as the first place baited in sunlight at dawn. Another ghostly appearance also tormented the minds of the people of Sirikus. With a large hat and grey clothes, the bloody cobbler looks like a travelling merchant. Those who watch him closely realize that beneath his broad hat, his face is covered by a mask with a long covered nose, and his grey clothes are stained with blood. Legend says that this monster wanders around Sirikus, in search of those who refuse to follow their path, refusing their vocation and destiny. With instruments and blades, he rips the skin from the bottom of the victim's feet, leaving behind only the bodies with a flayed feet. He uses the skin that he removes to make shoes and offer them to those who want to follow a vocation but hesitate and resist to fulfill their dreams putting them back on the path of their destiny. The ghost is feared by many, and legends say that he can control undead and travel to the shadows, emerging from any location in Sirikus. No account of the Whispering Beasts and the Bloody Cobbler, 
was recorded after the hour of the screaming shadows, when Lord Soth disappeared from Citicus. But the Citican people have not forgotten these horrors. The truth is, the bloody cobbler and the whispering beasts were aspects of the soul of Peridor, Lord Soth's infant son, killed in the fires of the cataclysm. The mists has brought the soul of his dead son to torment his father in the last moments of Lord Soth. The fragments of his son's soul merged once again in the image of Peridor, in the arms of his mother, the elf Isolde, before Lord Soth, moments before they all disappeared forever from the face of Sirikus. The deeds of these macabre phantoms, however, is to exert their influence on Sirikus. Ganelon the Doomed is a human who was once a miner from the village of Veidrava, and who had traded his vocation for adventure for a peaceful life with his beloved Helen. Helen contracted the ancient fever and lost her sanity. Maddened, she ran away and Ganelon left to try to search for her, but ended up meeting with the bloody cobbler on his way. The ghost handed him a piece made with the skin of an adventurer who had strayed from his destiny, and put Ganelon back on the path of his true calling. Ganelon's adventures forever changed the face of Sidicus. On his journey, he was captured and tortured by Inza and her followers, but he managed to escape. However, Inza cursed him, condemning him to destroy with his own deeds everything he loved. After this tragic event, he became involved in alliance with the Whispering Beasts and the White Rose to restore the moon Lunitari to the sky of Sidicus. In Nvidia, he was confronted by Malocchio Adere, and after an agreement with the Dukar, went back to the Veidrava salt mines with the aim of ruining the ritual conducted by Azrael to prevent him from becoming the new Dark Lord of Sirikus. Despite his success in preventing Azrael's ritual, Ganelon lives a torment life. He moved away from Helen fearing that the curse cast by Inza would cause him to destroy his beloved. He inherited the tools of trade from the bloody cobbler and now wanders through Sirikus, fighting the darkness imposed by Inza's shadows and hunting down his enemy. Another famous hero of Sirikus is the elf ranger Jameld of Roth, a notorious monster hunter. Coming from a family with a long tradition as warriors and rangers, Jameld had his encounter with the horrors of Sidicus in the marshes near Roth, when on an expedition, a group led by his father found an ancient tomb in the bog. They were attacked by an ancestral dead, an elf of mummified body and great power, who murdered his father and much of his group. Jamelt fled and suffered from a grave disease caused by the creature's touch, but he survived. With his body weakened and scared by illness, he became obsessed with revenge. In the year 724, he teamed up with the famous monster hunter Van Hichten to hunt the bog monster of Roth the mummy of a minotaur that had been dragged by the swampy waters in the distant past and now had returned to terrorize the region. After defeating the monster, he went on a journey with Van Richten to search for the evil coat of the Hunters of the Seven Scarabs. After returning to Roth, he continues to search and hunt for the mummy that murdered his father and present a strongly opposition to the government of the tyrannical Azrael. At the western end of Sitikus, in the forest between the cities of Roth and Mal Erex, 
Another group opposes the dark forces of Inza Kutevik. The region recently became known as the Giant's Cloak, due to the strange group that now roams the woods. The Wanderers are the survivors of the old caravan led by Magda Kutevik, who have now become a group of adventurers seeking revenge against Inza, the Dark Lord of Sidicus and Doctor of Magda. The group is led by the ranger Nicholas and accompanied by two other survivors from the old caravan, the experienced warrior Alexei and the vengeful rogue Piot. The last member of this group generally astonishes those who observe him as he is a stone giant called Nabun. Nabun was over 400 years old when he was engulfed by the mists and entered the demi-plane of dread. Wandering alone in the secluded corners of these inhospitable lands, he answered a cry for help while passing through the Fumwoods in Citicus. He had been lured to a trap by Inza, who used Kuchev Kujel, a sacred artifact of her people, to break Nabun's legs and knock him unconscious. Inza handed the crippled and unconscious giant to Azrael as a slave in trade for powerful artifacts, and for many years Nabun was kept crippled and chained in the depths of the Vedrava salt mines, serving the tyrannical dwarf. Nabun remained several years as a slave, until one day we received a visit from the bloody cobbler in the depths of the mines. Nabun was the last creature to be helped by the cobbler before his disappearance from the face of Citicus. He was not only free, but had his legs healed by the spectre. He received a shoe made from the skin of the feet of all the dead Vistanis of the Wanderer's caravan. Nabun was reconnected with his destiny to wander and explore the lands of the mists, as well as forged a mystical link with the wanderers and the Vistani people, joining the group to hunt and take revenge on Isa Kulchavik. In the center of the great chasm was once the sinister Nedagard Keep, Lord of Fortress. This fortress was created by the mist to be an imperfect replica of Dagat Keep, the former castle of Lord Soth in Kryn. Dagat Keep was a glorious construction of redstones, whose walls, battlements, and towers imitate the intricate design of a rose. After the cataclysm in Kryn, Dagat Keep was destroyed and blackened by the flames that devastated that world, and it became a cursed and haunted place. The fortress that exists in the center of Sidicus is a pale reflection of the ancient fortress of Lord Soth, and constantly seems to alter its passages, corridors, arches, and battlements, as if it were a blurred memory of the past and a source of constant irritation to, this, to its master. For this very reason, Lord Soth called it Nedagard which means, in his ancient language, not Dagad. The fortress was haunted by specters of twelve benches, who gathered in the throne room at midnight to mourn in the ear of Lord Soth the litany of his crimes and sins. Its ancient battlements were guarded by thirteen skeletal knights, Lord Soth's former vassals, cursed for their loyalty to their master. In this table, Lord Soth kept his nightmare, the cursed mount that served him, and in his gardens, only torn pale hoses grew. When a fool approaches the beautiful white flowers, they were cut by the thorns and entangled, and the flowers drained the blood from their bodies, until the very roses became red and then dark with the drained blood. 
in his throne room, six memory mirrors were once kept. Creations of the master illusionist Tindalfalus, who were able to recreate false memories and bewitch its observers. These mirrors were almost all destroyed in the year 744, but one last mirror remained intact until it shattered in the events of the Night of the Screaming Shadows and when Nedagat Keep was consumed by dark flames. To these days, the fragments of these mirrors hold strong magic and if combined, they can be a powerful weapon against Sitko's new Dark Lady, Inza Kuchavik. When this mirror finally shattered, the false image it held of Lord Soth was released, and now rumors are circulating that a noble, kind and blessed knight wandered through Citicus, carrying in his chest a large fragment of the memory mirror. This knight now roams through Citicus, protecting innocence and fighting for justice, and introduces himself as Lord Lawrence Soth. Whether this blessed night will be a hope for the people of Sidigus, or will commit the same crimes and sins of his original reflection, we still cannot say. As we listen to the secrets whispered by the shadows, we hear the ancient darkness whisper a tale of honor, love, death, disgrace and calamity and we realize that we have heard the lament of Nedagard haunted benches. Join us, subscribe to this channel and enable notifications. In our next video, we will hear in the lament of the benches the dark tale of Lord Lawrence Soth, the Knight of the Black Rose.